every morning, I start my day by going for a little walk and have a breaky with my girls. Check on everybody if they are well. Sometime when it's a rainy or snowy day, the dog gets served breakfast in bed, and then I would do some room service for them if needed before I shoot off to work. Hope you won't find me crazy. I'm just like any other pet owner. These girls are my family, my friend, my entertainer, and sometimes my counselor too. Like I mentioned before, I have moved to many places lately, and they are always go with me. How to be precise? I pack them with me wherever I go. We have been backpacking together for nearly two years now. I was born, raised, and spent more than half of my life in a busy city. Now that I'm living in a rural area, I found that gumboots are quite handy and practical for my daily tasks. This huge farmland is also become my new school and playground. I learn at least one life lesson a day. I felt stronger, more and more mature as the day goes by. Someone concerns if I'll feel lonely by living alone in this countryside. Then I really want to know what is the exact definition of loneliness. If loneliness means someone who is living by themselves, doing everything by themselves, then I might fall into that category. But just because my life is not following social idealistic of how life should be. Just because I don't conform to a certain idea of having a certain amount of friend or certain frequency of social interaction, am I so called lonely? In my opinion, loneliness can occur even when you are among group of people, or even when you are in a relationship with someone, and that to me is even scarier than being by myself. I have seen some people. Have to suffer with a cheater, player, taker, liar, violent, manipulative or control freak partner, in order to keep that in relationship status on social, or perhaps some business benefit. I have seen someone. Constantly doing new things, even when their energy drained, so they have stories to show, and be accepted in a group of cool friends, and unconsciously judging others that doesn't meet the same standard they created. I have experienced being among a lot of people, but felt invisible, and been made to feel so small. Isn't that sounds more like a definition of loneliness? It may sound negative at first, but I bet you know that these things happen all the time in real world. These are not speech of depression or introversy, but I'm speaking out as someone who has been there, done that. Now that I took a little step back, I can see things in a different perspective. When you understand that being single, being unliked by someone, is not a failure; it's natural. It's something you can't control. When you understand that being in a relationship or having large group of friends is not necessarily make you happier, when you finally found that relationship is not a desperate necessity, 
when you can be your own best friend, when you enjoy your own company, you will have all the time in the world to focus on yourself, to reconstruct your inner peace, to make yourself happy. When you prioritize yourself, you can truly do everything you want, when you want, and exactly how you want to. When you learn that your happiness does not need others' approval, you will slowly but surely build up strong foundation within you, physically and emotionally, and no one else can lower down that self-esteem. When you're no longer rushing into any kind of relationship, you will have time to deliberate who you really want to share part of your life with, which circle you want to be in. You will have time to find those who respect the way you are and truly appreciate your value. And even if you can't find one, I believe at that point you won't feel sad, lonely or lack of anything anymore because you have already fulfilled yourself. I have not mastered it yet, but undergoing with this experiment. At least now I learned that being alone is not scary, but being with someone that makes you feel lonely is. Choose your circle wisely.